This is McKinsey Recruiting, a podcast created to help you learn more about McKinsey and company. My name is Philip, and I am here to answer all your questions about McKinsey Recruiting and introduce you to some of our McKinsey personalities. In this episode, we will talk about Access McKinsey, a group that aims to support colleagues with disabilities. Spanning the globe, our members include colleagues with visible disabilities, like mobility impairments, as well as non-visible disabilities, like learning disabilities and chronic health conditions. Our guest today is John Murfield. John joined McKinsey in 2020 and is now a digital analyst in our Boston office. John will share more about Access McKinsey and how the community has supported him, what it is like working at McKinsey with a disability, and what all this has to do with music and mice. Are you ready? Then let's start our podcast, McKinsey Recruiting. Hi, John. I uh, hope you enjoyed our new intro music at the beginning of the podcast. Thanks for being our guest and a warm welcome from Germany to America. <laughs> hey, Philip. Thank you. Uh, yeah, what a, great, uh, <laughs> what a great song to start with. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, uh, the song we just listened to is called Mousy and is from your 2020 album, Mousy's Night Out. I know that you have a passion for music and my team and I listen to some of your songs to get a sense of your style. And I must say, we love your music and hope that our podcast listeners do as well. Since we have you here, could you tell us a bit about this particular song and why did you choose to sing about mice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's that, first of all, that recording uh, did with um, my my band, Mindset, well, not my band, the, the band I was a part of, Mindset, um, which uh, we, we played around Boston uh, pre-pandemic um, and I, I great collaborators and musicians there. So, uh, you know, um, definitely check out uh, Mindset Music as well. Um, you know, it's not, <laughs> it's not about mice per se. Um, oh, really? <laughs> I, really. Um, I know there's a mouse on the uh, album cover, but that's... Um, I honestly, um, I was sort of thinking about like the sort of I'm not very versed in like internet culture but I I'm pretty fascinated with sort of the concept of like the influencer the influencer class and people whose sort of like livelihood is built around their just like being really charming um and mm -hmm. there's a particular uh woman who goes by the name of Mousy who's like a she's like a gamer I don't know much about this, but she, she <laughs> plays video games and she's just like really funny. Um, and I just kind of became a little fascinated with like how she kind of is like her life is, is sort of a business. And like, I just thought that was sort of like beautiful and like a little tragic in a way. And I just kind of was writing about it. So the, I don't know all this intersection of like the kind of influencer economy and like the proliferation of big data and privacy and AI, like, I don't know. I was just kind of thinking about all that stuff. And um, so that's where Mousy and, and kind of the whole album, Mousy's Night Out, sort of was inspired by. Um, and when did you discover your passion for music? And how would you describe the style of it? <laughs> um, I've been playing music for a long time. I, I think I started playing piano when I was like three years old. Um, so big thanks to my parents for that. Um, <laughs> but I started writing songs when I was like early as a teenager and I really, you know, it's always been a thing that I've loved to do as sort of an emotional and intellectual like release. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, I love like indie rock and uh, kind of indie pop and um, you know, so I think I fit into that style somewhat, um, but I don't know. I love to like try and get, you know, big abstract ideas into my music or, or, you know, say things in a new way. And so, I don't know, I, I like the kind of the craftiness of it as well. 
So this is also your chance to pitch it to a broader audience. Um, where can our listeners find more if they're interested? Yeah, this is, uh, this is by far the biggest <laughs> audience most people <laughs> will ever hear that song. Um, yeah, you can find me on Spotify, uh, John Merfeld. Um, it's kind of where, or any streaming, I think, but I, I'm most, Spotify is the one I actually like, you know, keep up with. Um, and it's there. And, and if you find that song in particular, it'll link to, um, to Mindset music and some of my other collaborators on that album uh, you'll find as well so um, we yeah <laughs> we also know that you've worked for a radio program you even did stand-up comedy for a while um do you ever experience stage fright and if so do you have any tips to overcome it <laughs> you know i i um like even this interview which i you know i started talking really fast out of the out of the bat so i'm not it's not <laughs> I don't think there was something you totally overcome. Um, I I don't know. Uh, I I think you just you know a, a big part of it is just loving, you know, making sure that you're having fun and actually believing that it's going to be fun. Um, and I think the reason like stuff gets a little easier after you've done it a lot is you you just know you just are. Like with stand up, for example, like when I, when you've done a routine a few times, you just sort of know what's going to work. And so you just, you know, you don't have to worry as much about that. But the, the pressure of an audience, I think, is it's never going to fully go away. <laughs> um, so sorry to all the uh, aspiring comedians out there. <laughs> Um, so, John, you do a lot outside of work. Um, and now we'd like to learn a bit more about uh, your role with McKinsey. Uh, you work as a digital analyst in our Boston office. After studying physics as an undergraduate, you chose to pursue a master's degree in uh, computer science. Where does your passion for technical topics come from? That's a great question. Um, and I don't know if I have a really clean answer i've sort of just been i've sort of just been following what's what's been interesting um to me through throughout um with sort of a short-term focus almost that i'm i'm now starting to sort of see as more of a career arc uh at mckinsey but yeah i i in college i you know i thought i wanted to be like a scientist for a while or even like a science writer um but then i you know i couldn't really <laughs> find work doing that and uh especially as a research scientist, I don't think I was very good. Um, but I knew some computer science. I'd taken some coursework. And so I sort of, you know, my first job out of college was as a, as a data scientist for an insurance company, um, which, you know, somebody just kind of went out on a limb to, to bring me onto that. And it was sort of a new team. And um, it was just so much fun uh, being in kind of an, you know, a small technical team um and kind of the the rhythm and the sort of there is sort of a putting on a show aspect of delivering software on a deadline um that's really interesting can you explain that a bit <laughs> yeah i mean i've been in plenty of you know theater productions and it's sort of like mm -hmm. you are you know it's very collaborative obviously you're building up to this thing and you sort of know there's there's issues but you know oh we'll we'll figure that out later today we're figuring out this um And I think it is it is pretty similar to when you're developing a product or, or you know, any any team uh, effort, really. Like, you kind of know there's this daunting list of stuff that you need to get done. Um, and But, you know, between everybody, you kind of figure it out um, day by day. Like, what are we going to do? Um, <laughs> and there's almost inevitably going to be a big, you know, hopefully not too much, but often some, some tension and uh, apprehension around the release. Um, and that's, you know, it's exciting. It's, it's exhilarating. Um, and uh, how did you end up at McKinsey? Yeah, well, so um, I, I realized my technical knowledge was not really as deep as it, you know, as I, I wanted it to be. And especially I noticed a lot of people on my team who were doing work that i wanted to go forward with, you know, had, had master's degrees. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it kind of seemed like the right path. And then, um, honestly, I, I hadn't really, I wasn't that familiar with McKinsey when I first applied, but I 
had done a workshop led by a McKinsey, a couple of McKinsey folks um, at that job where they helped us kind of roadmap the next, basically the next year of stuff we were going to do. It's like a kind of a day long intensive workshop. Um, And I remember thinking like, wow, like that was super fun. Like I, you know, I could do that. Um, Or I could see myself doing that. And so, you know, I, I, applied uh to be a summer like data engineer um for the summer of 2019 and you know was fortunate enough to to have the opportunity to do that and i really loved it so um i was eager to uh to come back full-time as a digital analyst your role is to analyze and present data in a digestible way to our colleagues and clients what do you enjoy most about your work Ooh, that's a great question <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> the thing I like about uh so in particular I'm in sort of the data engineering group so it's I I don't have my, my data science and kind of predictive modeling and AI skills are you know pretty limited but what I really love is like I love hooking things together um and so a lot of clients have you know their data in these sort of old legacy systems and it's uh nobody really likes them but that's what they had in like the 80s or 90s or whatever when they first decided to start collecting data um and now they want to you know make it more presentable or actually do something actionable with it and um honestly that that moment of like you know you kind of as a software engineer you know you take all these pieces and hook them together and say all right the data is going to go from the the old crappy system to some you know, data warehouse in the cloud, and then we're going to show it in some, you know, nice dashboard or some nice um, website or something. The moment that you actually press the button and you see it has come all that way. Um, it's really cool. Uh, it's, um, it's just really neat to say, all right, well, it all worked. It all hooked together. Um, so in particular with digital, I've, I've said this before, but I really like knowing when I'm done. Um, and like when when the job has been completed um, and that's when you see the data and it actually goes all the way through the system. Um, that that's, feels really good. Today's topic is uh, something that does not seem to be talked about enough, how um, to best support individuals with disabilities so they can contribute their full potential. At McKinsey, we have a group called Access McKinsey that aims to support colleagues with disabilities. Members of this group uh, include colleagues with visible disabilities like mobility impairments as well as non-visible disabilities like learning disabilities and chronic health conditions. John, why did you join this group? Yeah, um, so in particular, I, I have uh, albinism, which is a genetic uh gift from my parents um that means uh my body doesn't produce any pigment so in particular um my vision is is really uh really poor um and i'm i'm very sensitive to light so i don't you know i don't drive that's really the main thing you know i don't drive i was never very good at um you know certain sports um things like that um so you know it 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 does you know, it, it affects how I work in certain ways. Um, and in particular, I remember like when I was, uh, when I was, I got my offer letter for the summer internship a couple of years ago. I remember it said, uh, there's some weird requirement in it that you have a driver's license, which I think was a holdover from the days when, you know, before Uber where consultants were expected to rent cars mm -hmm. in whatever city they were in. Um, and I emailed them back and I was like, Hey, like, I don't have a driver's license. Like, is this going to be a problem? Um, and the recruiter said, Oh, you know, I don't, let's, let's, uh, I don't think that really matters. And they actually ended up taking the language out of the offer letter. But the nice thing was that she then took the further step of saying, Hey, we have, you know, this group, um, access. And would you like to talk to somebody, uh, from it? And I ended up talking to one of the partners who's kind of the, one of the founders of the group. And, um, it was, it was really great to know that it was being thought about as like a you know a need for community and and support um so right when i, I joined full-time i wanted to you know get more involved and um so yeah that's that's why i joined i, I really just wanted 
to kind of be a part of that that community at the farm of people um people working with disabilities and how does mckinsey support people with disabilities that's a good question and i mean the the sort of short answer is it um it depends right there's it's disability looks so different to different people and i think not only like the the breadth of kinds of disabilities like you mentioned but even just how how people frame it in their minds and how they think about it and how you know i i think for me there's times when it feels just like a, a minor a minor nuisance really um and other times where it's more like hey this is a part of my identity that i i kind of want to to live uh actively mm -hmm. um so I, I think, honestly, the, the front line for supporting people with disabilities at McKinsey, and I think this is just true kind of by nature, like a lot of it's just mindfulness at the interpersonal level. Um, so, you know, there's obviously there's formal channels in the firm for mm -hmm. requesting accommodations and things like that. But a lot of times what it really boils down to is like, you know, your your team and people just being compassionate and trying to trying to make things work um i remember when i was a summer intern um i would we like i was uh you know in a, in a new city and uh like every day we would start uh our with a kind of a morning meeting at 8 a.m and we were at the top floor of this office building and like you know, it, it was, it was great. It was a great view and, and all this, it was a nice room, but people, the whole team wanted to like be right in the corner of this room where it was like huge windows on either side. Um, and it was so, so, so bright. And, you know, it took me a while to, you know, it took me several weeks to say like, Hey, I'm <laughs> pretty uncomfortable in the morning meetings. Like it's, you know, it's just way too bright for me. It's hard to focus. Um, and they were, my team was like, honestly, like kind of almost horrified that I had waited so long to say something. Cause I, to them, it was like, oh my gosh, like we hate to think that you were kind of, um, uh, having a hard time for, for that long. So, and you know, there, you know, people were so quick to say, all right, well, you know, if we close the shades, is that enough? Do we need to like move to a totally different room? You know, um, we really are, are a firm of, of problem solvers. Um, And I, I, not everyone shares the framing of disability as like inherently a problem, but you know, there are certain practical things that, yeah, people just really want to be helpful. Um, and I, I think that's a big thing. That's a big way that, the firm, you know, it's a decentralized firm, right? It's a, it's a, just a collection of people ultimately. So, um, that's what it comes down to. And, and just to build on that, uh, you know, a big function of access McKinsey as a group is also just to provide that support at a, at a personal level um, and bring people together from, you know, literally the whole world um, mm -hmm. and just say, Hey, you know, let's talk about some of these shared experiences, like, you know, being uncomfortable asking for help, even if you know it would be given. Um, there's some universal things like that, that it's just really, it's powerful to kind of get a room full of people talking about that. And, you know um, yeah. So, so I, that's kind of my, first thing that comes to mind. And why is it so important for McKinsey to have such a network and how are you engaged in it? It's important because, I mean, for one thing, there's just, you know, um, disabilities are really common. Uh, disabilities are really common. Um, I, I think it's something like 15% of the global population. I might be getting that number wrong, but... Um, <laughs> lots of people have disabilities of some kind. And so uh, as a practical matter, it's sort of like if we want to be, you know, attracting and retaining and promoting the best people we, we can and, um, you know, doing the most good, you know, we, we need to, we need to figure that out just as we do with any affinity group, um, that, that we, that we engage in the firm, um, part is, you know, um, so there's that. There's also, I think, the importance of just, you know, kind of like I said, like overall mindfulness. I think disability is a thing where, 
even just sort of basic consideration goes a long way. And I think the more, the more people are in the mindset of, Hey, how, let's think about how this is going to affect mm-hmm. all the different individuals, maybe differently. Um, the more people are in that framing, I think is also just a positive, you know, it's just a good way to think. Um, and then, yeah, I, I, I'm in, so I'm particularly involved in sort of the recruiting, um, some recruiting efforts that we're doing in the access uh, network. So I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not really a, a, leader, a leader in the group, but I, I happen to be um, helping spearhead some uh, some particular things we're doing on the recruiting side. So, uh, for example, trying to trying to publish more public facing material for candidates with disabilities who might have some apprehensions about the application mm-hmm. process, for example. Um, but then also working on the other side with recruiters and making sure that everyone, you know, knows the right way to, you know, direct people um, to the group if they want. So, yeah, I, I think it's it's trying to change, you know, make sure we're putting our best foot forward and being as accommodating as we can um, with with candidates and also trying to give candidates that sort of, you know, make sure they have the tools and the confidence to... Um, to feel like they can apply and, and, and thrive here. And um, what kind of things are you discussing within Access McKinsey? For instance, I've heard something about cheat sheets. Maybe you could elaborate on that a little bit further. Yeah, definitely. Um, so this is something we did. Uh, I, I shouldn't. Well, this is something that the group uh, put out last year. Um, and I think these were really awesome. There were these um, sort of like practical we call them like tip sheets uh, for mm-hmm. for teams and especially kind of team team managers um, for colleagues with disabilities. So, um, you know, for example, for, you know, there's a sheet for colleagues with visual impairments and it, you know, it just had really practical things like, um, you know, don't like rearrange the room or, or move stuff around without telling anyone um, because, uh, you know, Blind and visually impaired people really use they they rem- they have really good you know sense of where things are and they need because they need to just know intuitively okay that's there and if something moves then the act of finding it is a lot harder than just knowing where it is um, uh, so things like that um, that you know and and I think we publish them for you know uh, deaf and, and hearing impaired colleagues um, you know people with mobility. Uh, impairments or, or even uh, in uh, learning disabilities. Um, and, you know, it, uh, it, again, it's, it's sort of just what happens when you get a lot of people together to share their experience. And I hope, um, you know, I hope people have found the tip sheets useful and I hope that teams and, and colleagues have, have benefited mm-hmm. from the practical advice. Um, so yeah, that was another thing we did. And I think that's sort of another f- function of the group. Um, as we, you know, continue to grow and gain, you know, visibility within the firm, I'm, I, I'm optimistic that again, kind of this, these basic practical mindful steps um, will become just common practice and, and standard. Okay. Then let's get a bit more practical. Um, sure. What advice would you give to someone who has a colleague with a disabilities? Are there any do's and don'ts? Yeah. I mean, Oh man, <laughs> I'm I'm probably not the best, the very best person to uh, to speak on this, but um, you know, it's uh, one one really common thing, I think, and this is maybe true more broadly, but you know, it's it's kind of about letting people define things how they how they see it. Um, so like there's, you know, there's no, like, I, I know there's certain language that some people often default to of kind of, oh, you know, that must be so difficult or wow, you you know, you're so, that's so impressive that you navigate that. Um, and, you know, there's no, there's no need for that. And it, it doesn't, you know, that's not how a lot of people see it. Um, and, you know, and again, I, I'm not, I'm not representative, uh, necessarily by any means but you know it's it's a lot of people frame it um more just well n- no i mean that's just kind of how i 
that's just how I navigate my life. And there's, there's things that are require more care or attention, um, and others that don't. So that's one. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, just kind of just always, it's always about, about asking, I think, and just saying, you know, Hey, what does, is this, is this working for you? I mean, you know, in a, it's sort of nice in the remote, the, the work from home world where people have a lot more control over their working environments, but, um, especially when you're traveling or, or in an office, like there's a lot of things that are no longer in your direct control. Um, and so for anybody working with a colleague or, or, you know, have someone working for you, like, yeah, just, just, just ask, um, people might not feel comfortable asking for help, but I, it's, it's always easier if someone says, you know, Hey, I is, is the way we're s- sitting, is that work for you? Is the way we're presenting information? Are you able to, you know, be, be totally plugged in there? Um, cause it's going to be different for everybody, uh, ultimately. Um, and some people sort of would prefer to just, you know, Hey, I've kind of got my way to deal with this and I'm thank you, but I'm going to, I'm going to stick with that. And some people would say, Oh yeah, actually, you know, could we, could we change this? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I'd say that's, that's, those are the first two things that come to mind. Um, and, um, what advice would you give to someone who has a disability and is considering a career with McKinsey? Always, always ask. I mean, well, first of all, I would say, you know, it's, there's no reason to be particularly nervous about McKinsey as, as a, as a workplace. I, I honestly think the, the level of accommodation and, and even just basic compassion and kind of human support is really, um, is really impressive. Honestly, some of the best advice I've gotten here is actually from the, from the, um, the head the global head of access McKinsey. And she kind of always says like anything, you know, don't, don't write anything off at McKinsey until you've explicitly asked for it. Um, cause, cause someone will probably want to help you out. And that can be more general about kind of like, you know, a role you might want to take on or a, an industry you might want to work in. But I think for, for colleagues with disabilities, it, it does have a certain extra layer of kind of, just, just ask. Um, and, and that's not easy to do, um, by any means, but that's, mm -hmm. that's always going to be my advice. Cause really throughout my life, for the most part, pe people, people want to help. Um, and again, that's, that's been my experience and it's not, it's not been everyone's experience, but, um, the first step is always, always going to be to ask. So yeah, I think that's what I'd say. <laughs> Thanks for that. Thank, also, thanks for your open words about that. And um, so I'm taking out just, just go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think so. Um, <laughs> I know. I mean, this is this is a great this is a great place. And people, like I said, I mean, it's really an incredibly diverse firm, all things considered. And so there's, you know, we we just like to figure things out here and and figure out how to make things work. Um, so there's there's really no reason. There's no reason you couldn't come here and just you know do amazing things, um, even if you need a little help in in certain areas. Like, yeah. So, um, John, now we come to one of my favorite parts of the podcast, sure. our "Ask Me Anything" section. This time, again, with something new, uh, the so-called recruiter question. Here we asked a recruiter to tell our listeners something about a specific recruiting focus topic, something that we are asked a lot, and he or she has a question for you at the end. So, John, are you ready for your recruiter question? Philip, I'm ready. <laughs> so, this time we invited Angela as a special guest. She is working in our German recruiting team and tells us something about staffing. Angela, go ahead. Hi, my name is Angela and I work as a recruiter in the Cologne office in Germany. I often get asked what opportunities there are for further self-development and learning at McKinsey and how much influence our colleagues have on their staffing process. So, 
Let me briefly explain our staffing process. What is staffing? Staffing is an ongoing process and dialogue with an assigned mentor. There are three priorities that we focus on in your staffing process. Those are skill building, apprenticeship and balance. In the skill building, we encourage you to think about your strength, new skills you would like to acquire, the people you are most excited to be working with, and of course, the type of work that best captures your interest. For the apprenticeship, we aim to staff you with leadership in your office to help you connect locally and set up a support base. And for balance, we aim to staff our junior colleagues with local clients with your development of expertise and network expansion for the client at heart. We usually start the staffing process by exploring local or regional opportunities, and then we look to national opportunities. Additionally, there's also the option to explore opportunities internationally. You will have the chance to choose your desired industry and region. Therefore, your influence on, this, on the decision is very significant. Usually working outside of your home is the result of your wish to pursue your experience in other locations or industries that are not served by our local office. We are deeply committed to finding a balance between your desired region and industry and try our best to make them match according to your interests. This is a great opportunity for you to gain valuable experience in different regions and get to know how different industries work. So, my question for you now, John, is do you have any stories you can share concerning your own staffing experience? Thank you. Thank you, Angela. So, John, what are your experiences with staffing? Yeah, that's been consistent with my experience. Um, I, I've definitely had things where I, you know, going in, um, I, you know, I haven't been on so so many projects but um I, there have been a couple of times where I'm going in i've sort of thought you know this you know i'm not sure if this is a great fit really um but i've i've sort of always been proven wrong in the end ultimately like my first um my first project right when i joined full time was it was more like it was a digital study, but it was more about digital strategy. So we were more kind of in the planning phase. I wasn't really doing any um, coding. Um, I was kind of more working, kind of a, as a as a business analyst and supporting a team through kind of, you know, conducting interviews and kind of putting together a, a narrative and figuring out, you know, kind of what a product is going to look like. Um, and there were times when I kind of thought, man, like this isn't really what I thought I was going to be doing here. Um, but looking back, it, it really was a super valuable experience, especially to start with, because I, it just was a great introduction as kind of the core of like McKinsey's ways of working. And I, I learned just a lot of practical stuff about kind of taking notes and, you know, you know, doing kind of storytelling through kind of pr how to present information, sort of the McKinsey way. And, um, and I'm super glad I got that foundation. Um, so that was definitely kind of a like staffing for staffing for development. Um, but then I, I think there, what there was a sense after that of kind of, okay, you know, we know that was out of your comfort zone and like, you know, now let's, let's find you something that, that fits really well with your core skills and, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and in, in an industry that I had some familiar familiarity with, um, which was, uh, you know, kind of energy and, and materials and stuff. Um, so, you know, I, I think I had a lot of leeway uh, after that. And then, you know, as kind of another just story about sort of contrast, like I spent a lot of last year working in sort of an advanced analytics kind of artificial intelligence, um, you know, space um, and really kind of doing, you know, pretty heavy like data science, um, mm -hmm. you know, building out data pipelines to support, you know, a pretty advanced um product that, that we work with um and after that i was really feeling like oh man like i kind of miss being close to the product side being close to actual you know just users who are kind of using a site and and need access to data on kind of a personal level um 
because before I really, we basically had been making a, uh, a data science project to support machines um, and how they run. Um, and so, it, you know, it, it was great. And I, I reached out to some people and, and there were conversations with, um, with kind of my staffing manager, but at the same time, it was at, by that point, I kind of, you know, I, I knew more people and I knew kind of what I knew who might be working on something interesting. And so, you know, I could just kind of reach out to people in my network and say, Hey, like, are you working on any kind of like building up a new product? Um, any, any sort of projects like that. And, and I was really lucky to, um, find someone who needed a data engineer for the the thing I'm currently working on. So it's definitely been a mix, you know, of, yeah, trying to meet those development goals and sort of build some core skills. Um, and at the same time, you know, sometimes there's just a need and you, you meet the right person at the right time. And, um, you know, I feel like I've gotten really lucky, uh, with, with this latest engagement. So, so you do have a say in the process. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, and, and the times when I <laughs> haven't had as much of a say, I think ultimately that, you know, uh, it, it really was a great development opportunity and I, I've gotten more and more of a say as I've kind of figured out progress my place here. Yeah, definitely. Great, uh, son, John. So that's it for our Ask Me Anything section. But I would like to ask one final roundup question. Sure. We at McKinsey know the classic technique of top-down communications, <laughs> where you sum up the key message of what you want to say, preferably at the beginning of the presentation. Right. So my final question in the end is, what is it that you would like our listeners to get out of our podcast episode today? What I want people to get out of this is um, kind of the the evergreen reminder to, you know, just be mindful of of the people around you, and especially when you're in a position to, um, to you know, create an experience. Um, just think about think about who's going to be living that, um, and at the same time, um, I just am always going to encourage people to to ask for help. Um, uh, when they need it. John, that's it. Actually, that's our episode. Uh, today, we have come to an end of our recruiting app podcast. It was super interesting to learn more about Access McKinsey. Thanks for your openness. And um, it was nice to get to know you. Thanks for being a guest on our show today. <laughs> Thanks so much, Philip. Thanks for listening. If you have more questions or ideas for our show, drop us a line on our podcast page, mckinsey.com slash recruiting podcast to learn more about our recruiting efforts how to apply and tons of other information check out mckinsey.com slash careers